Okay, I think we're ready, and we're back. It is the book corner. Welcome back, everybody. Glad to be here. I really miss doing this show. So tonight we are going to talk about um, Nora Roberts and her new trilogy, which is The Chronicles of One. A uh, totally awesome trilogy. I absolutely love it. Um, if you have not read it, we're going to discuss it a little bit. Hopefully, uh, no spoilers too much. It'll just give you an idea of what these books are about. And they are totally, totally awesome. So, uh, bear with me for a minute. Um, we're going to start out with year one, uh, with the Chronicles of One. It is, it's, it is really a great series. And we're going to talk a little bit about Cassandra Clare. And if you're not, the name doesn't sound familiar. Maybe Mortal Engines does. City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Angels. And right now I'm reading the Dark Artifices series. I just finished uh, Lord of Shadows. And um absolutely love her books. Um, ugh, the end of Lord of Shadows, I was like, no, you can't do this to me. How many times have you done that with a book? No, we got to get to the next one. Um, Also, I'm reading The Red Queen. It looks quite interesting. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, So I'm just glad to be back on. Absolutely love this show. Um, If you have suggestions for books, please let me know what you'd like to hear about. And uh, we'll get it on for you, okay? Um. trying to think what else for right now uh and maybe we'll talk about you know books made into movies how they compare we all know how they usually compare that is for sure so we shall see what we shall see on that right okay almost done getting this uh oh everybody notifications on this I'm just happy. I, I, I just, I enjoyed doing this before. And somehow I got talked out of it. But no more. I'm doing this. It'll be every other week. Um, next week, Michelle and I will be on with The Walking Dead Planet. And then I'll be back the following week. So, we'll do a more extensive one then. I am running behind. So, So, uh, any time, every other Wednesday, join the discussion. Um, anybody who would like to go on the air with me about any st- particular book or book, series, or whatever, uh, let me know. So, first time back in a while, and I'm excited to be talking about Nor Roberts. Um, and I'm so looking forward to Stephen King's new one. Um, it bleeds. Oh, <laughs> I mean, just by the uh, title alone. Um, and we'll talk about Joe Hill one time. Just so many great authors out there. So many, so many. Then we'll go to the uh, like crime novels like um, Harlan Cobain. Um, And some mystery writers. I can talk about Ellery Queen and how about Murder, She Wrote. Of course. Gotta love those. We're going to do a whole, um, you know, slew of different types of books. So, nothing else to do in the winter, right? So, yeah. (laughs) Just sit back with me and get bored. Okay, that'll work. Um, Let me get this finished here. Get this posted. I'm going to be sorry to see this trilogy in, though, because it is that good. So we'll be discussing all these.
And anytime you need to get a hold of me, you can go to KBLP LLC uh, Facebook page or go to um, KBLP LLC 4 on YouTube. Or jo and join in the chat now, please. Uh, just hit uh, the button, it'll take you right to it. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be back. I am. I'm excited. Excited, excited, excited. All right. In just a minute here, and we'll get right to it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, we're having a little lull here. Let me know uh, what your favorite book is. Or one of your favorite books that you have read recently. Okay, all right, now we can get to it. Got that taken care of. Okay. Now, Nora Roberts, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear Nora Roberts? If you're like me, it was, oh, she does romance novels. Well, I got news for you. She does uh, a lot more than that. Um, there's a trilogy, it's called Chronicles of One. The first book is Year One. The second book is Blood and Bone, of Blood and Bone. And the third, which just came out this past, end of November, was The Rise of Magics. Um, I have that one. I have not read the third one yet. So, I am uh, so excited about it. I really am. Um, it is great. Um, and it is kind of a post-apocalyptic idea. Um, and don't bother reaching for a Kleenex. It's not just a cold, and it's not the flu. It is the doom. If you needed any further proof that the world was ending, here comes Nora Roberts with Year One. It's speculative fiction about a deadly pandemic. Anyone monitoring the mutating strains of pop fiction should have seen this new hybrid emerging from the Queen of Romance. Yes, the ground is already littered with the corpses of earlier apocalyptic novels, but Roberts will have no trouble clearing a spot to land. Year one begins with a, the deaths of five billion people. Uh, so it, it is really good. It is a total different take. I think you're going to really, really like this. Um The threats in Robert's novel are impossible to inoculate yourself against. Uh, the trouble starts, of course, at a holiday family gathering. Oh, yeah. The McLeods are getting ready for a New Year's Eve party on their vacation farm in Scotland when Ross McLeod, later known as Patient Zero, shoots a pheasant. As luck would have it, the dead bird lands in the center of a cursed circle of stones. Ah, oh, no. And before you know it, Granny groans. Now the end and the grief, the strife and the fear, the beginning and the light. Granny is always nattering unlike the Grim Weaker, so drink up, everybody. Um, but when the McLoyds fly back home to the U.S., they spread a magical flu virus to everyone else on the plane. Uh, of course, that's why you carry hand sanitizer, right? Of course. But anyway... Within days, hundreds of millions are dying. The governments collapse. Robert draws this medical disaster in quick strokes, following the lies of her many central characters while sketching the calamity circling the globe. At the center of her large cast is Lana. She's a New York sous chef, and she recently started dating Max, who is a famous writer. Hard and handsome with a scruffy look. There you go. 
He's been training Lana, Lana in magic, not M-A-G-I-C, M-A-G-I-C-K. And I put that in the chat. Okay. Um, and they're, the only thing hotter than their sex life is their witchcraft. They can like candles with their breath. And they are the perfect match for each other. They really are. As the flu epidemic takes down civilization, fantastical creatures begin to appear. Mixed among the surviving remnant of humanity are fairies, elves, sirens, and sorcerers, like the whole catalog of a New Age gift store come to life. The doom spreads its poison fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris. I'm so happy to be back. I really am. I'm excited. Um, so glad you're here. Glad you stopped by. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. Um, but this poison spreads fast, okay? Um, I'm sorry. I lost my place in my writing. See what See what you did. Stop it. <laughs> crazy. You crazy. Um, uh, the doom spreads its poison fast, Robert writes, while magics, both dark and the light, rose up to fill the void death created. Um, of course, everyone's on the move. <laughs> I was looking for something in particular, but... <laughs> um, everyone's on the move, fleeing the ruined cities. Uh, but there's no easy way to tell who's a regular human and who's one of the uncanny. The uncanny, um, uh, you can't tell who they are until they unfold their wings. Dead giveaway. Uh, what's worse, there's no way to distinguish the good guys from the evil freaks until they eviscerate you. Oops, too late. Um... <laughs> Year one barrels along for a couple hundred pages with heartbreaking losses, hair raising escapes, and gruesome attacks. Bad fairies want to finish off all the humans, racist humans want to pluck all the fairies, and what's left of the military, they want to capture survivals for medical experiments. But no matter how high the bodies pile up, there's always time for cute flirting between the good looking characters. Because every day in the midst of tragedy and despair, people go on. Um, and so does this story, of course. It becomes a problem. Once the cast of likable human and uncanny survivors, they start rebuilding society. The plot shifts down from the thrill of apocalyptic disaster to the tedium of inventory control. Um, lots of things going on. Uh... Can you imagine how radically civilization would react uh, at the arrival of magical creatures such as that? I think it would be great. Um, I, I thought it was a great trilogy. Year one is the first volume. Um, So again, in year one, 80% of the people on Earth have died. Um, there's some nasty sorcerers out there to kill Lana and her unborn child. Um, it is a great book. It really is. I loved year one. Um, I really did. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a great, great book. I loved it. If you have not read it, it's kind of a uh, it's 432 pages, the first book. And of course, the bigger the book, the better sometimes, right? It's post-apocalyptic, dystopian, fantasy fiction. It is great. I absolutely love it. Um, where there had been order, there was now chaos. And as the power of science and technology receded, magic rose up in its place. Um, of course, Alana was practicing in the loft apartment she shares with Max. Uh, some of this magic is unimaginably evil, and it can lurk anywhere. 
around the corner in fetid tunnels beneath the river, or the ones you know and love the most. As word spreads that neither the immune nor the gifted are safe from the authorities who patrol the rabid streets and with nothing left to count on but each other, Lana and Max make their way out of a wrecked New York City. At the same time, other travelers are heading west too. Chuck, a tech genius trying to hack his way through a world gone offline. Arliss, a journalist who has lost her audience but uses pen and paper to record the truth. Fred, who young, her young colleague, possessed a versioning abilities and an optimism that seems out of place in this bleak landscape. And then there's Rachel and Jonah, resourceful doctor and paramedic who fend off despair with their determination to keep a young mother and three infants in their care alive. Um, in a world of survivors where every stranger encountered could be either a savage or savior, none of them knows exactly where they are heading or why. But a purpose awaits them that will shape their lives and the lives, lives of all who remain. The end has come, but the beginning comes next. Um, it is... Like I said, when you hear Nora Roberts, the first thing you think of is romance novels. This is totally unlike anything like that. Um, it was uh, so good, so good. I can't. I didn't get. I liked the cover and everything, and I read the inside of the, of course, the book uh, cover, and I thought, man, this sounds really good. So I got it. I could not put it down. I absolutely love it. Um, and the doom is a vir virulent plague that causes death in a matter of days and spreads like wildfire, wildfire, causing the world as we know it to end, of course. And um, But it doesn't just kill people. It also changes them. There are people who are Im immune and remain human, whilst others... They're dubbed the uncannies. They manifest various magical abilities and become something more than human. And, of course, you have your light and dark uncannies, okay? Of course, as you know, that's a, you know equivalent of good and evil fighting each other. So, so all these characters in year one realize they, that to survive, they have to leave, leaving the cities behind to find a safe haven and try to live together uncanny and human um, with relative peace in the aftermath of the doom and society's collapse you, there are glimpses throughout you're one of the worst that both the dark uncannies and humans can do but also flashes of the best in both groups that showcase the light um, the first the three main groups of characters uh, in the first book are Arliss uh, Fred Arliss, of course, is the news reporter. Fred, he's a fairy um, who works at the TV station with Arliss. And Chuck, who's a hacker. And the guy who was Arliss's source of information after the doom. Um, and uh, after Arliss broadcasts the truth about the doom on air, her and Fred arrange to meet Chuck and they leave New York. Secondly, we have Rachel, who's a doctor. And Jonah, who can see life or death in people, and glimpses of how they died, uh, which is, a, a course, as you know, a blessing and a curse. He's a paramedic at the hospital with Rachel and Katie. Katie, whose parents and then her husband all die from the doom, and she's alone. Jonah brings her into the hospital, and she gives birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Um, and ends up being a surrogate mother to Hannah. Another baby girl whose mother dies from the doom. And they all leave New York together. Um, of course, the separate story arcs of both the groups fleeing New York. And they meet as if by fate on the road at a wreckage. And they travel together from then on. The third group um, is Lana, a sous chef from New York, and her partner Max, who's a successful writer. Both have slight magical abilities before the doom strikes and are witches, but with the outbreak of the doom, their powers are magnified. Along the way of their journey, they meet Eddie and his dog, Joe. Um, kind of, it actually, uh, it reminded me of Shaggy and Scooby. 
or um, in the stand red. So, but more a shaggy Scooby type thing. Uh, and the story arc with this group remained separate from the others for quite a while until finally all three converge together. Um, the cast of characters are exceptional, and all the main characters are given their own individual personalities and depth. I love Fred. He's innocent, cheerful, and always ready to help. Um, she's just instantly likable. And Eddie. Um, always a fan of, I love it, the animals and books. Joe and Eddie are great. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, you have all these groups, different things in there, uh, magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, um, you have fairies, elves, witches, sorcerers, in a dystopian type of book, but it was great. Uh, they tied in with the myth and folklore at the beginning of the book, and it just went on uh, seamlessly. It is totally great. Um... Of course, near the end of the book of year one, the focus shifts from the larger cast characters to focus on a single character. Um, we're not going to give you, I'm not going to tell you who or what, uh, but she makes them and their story the focal point, and it works. Oh my god, and you get so many answers in the sub second book of Blood and Bone. Um, I absolutely love that book, and I was so sad that. <laughs> um, Um, that too, we had to wait till November. Um, it, it was just, ugh, it was just that good. It really was. Um, we'll move on to uh, Blood and Bone. The third one is Rise of Magic. So I have not read it yet, but I will let you know. Um, but it's called The Chronicles of War. And it is so good. So, so good. Um, I can't, you know, uh, say enough of it. So, we will move on to the second book. <coughs> Actually, what had happened... I had um, was working, and the second book had come out. I didn't know there was a first book. A Blood and Bone came out, and that's where I read the inside of the cover. I'm like, damn, this looks really good. So I ended up reading the second book before I got the first. So then I went and got year one, and then read one and two again. Um, so A Blood and Bone... And uh, she continues, it's, of course, this is book two. Um, the world settles in its, into its new normal, as they say, um, after the doom. The girl who will be the one reaches her 13th birthday. She makes the choice to train with her magical mentor and steps into her many gifts. Uh, at first, she really does not want to. She's like, yeah, okay, I'll do this. I'll be back home in two weeks, whatever. Uh, the Doom has killed billions, and the survivors have aligned themselves into different factions, and of course, with uh, various priorities. Many have discovered magical abilities. Uh, many who don't have them hunt those who do. Of course, governments have failed. Electricity is scarce. Industrial production is practically non-existent. People must produce or scavenge food and goods. Thirteen years later, new hope is thriving. Magics and normals banding together for protection and community. Meanwhile, our girl, uh, Fallon Swift, raised on a remote farm with her mother, stepfather, and three younger brothers, of course, has learned the basics of survival. 
and knows that when she's 13, she's expected to leave with the mysterious Malik and train for two years, preparing to step into her role as the one, destined to save the world. When the time comes, she does go with him into a mystical forest with elves and fairies, where she studies spells, trains with swords, inspires with ghostly figures to build her strength and abilities. On the way, she finds allies of every variety, including three spirit animals, who represent aspects of her powers and humanity that enhance her ability to lead. She also meets a shadowy figure in her dreams who becomes more real when she travels across spaces. Um, she's able to travel across spaces in a flash. This is a um, she learns to do this. She realizes he's a son of New Hope and guesses their destinies are tied closely together, along with his twin sisters. Change is coming, and it's up to them to create a new, better world, or die trying. She continue, uh, Roberts continues with her apocalyptic chronicles of the one with a mesmer, mesmerizing follow-up that is bold and breathtaking. Focusing this is only on Fallon's rise, the plot offers details and glimpses the horror and trauma of the past 15 years and introduces, you'll know, the characters who presumably will frame the future. Um, it's great because she, Fallon fights this all the way. She does. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't know why I have to do it. I'm going to come home in two weeks. I'll give it a try. Bye, bye, bye. She was really resistant to it until she uh, really you know, started learning things. Oh my gosh, right? Um, I, 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 the, it's just, she's very good. Um, you just get drawn into this world and it is great. Um, yeah, Blood and Bone actually, you know, focuses on the rise of this next generation. Um, She was a book post. This is by Fallon Swift, the baby born at the end of year one. And she's destined to be the one. Lana was carrying her. Um, so we also find out different things about Lana and Max. Um, of course, some people were transformed by the doom into nightmares come to life. And they were corrupted by their new powers. And one of those who let power corrupt was Fallon's uncle, who killed her father at the end of year one. You have to read it. They are so great. Um, at the end of year one, this, but months, and I quote, but months became years and the world remained broken. Hunts and raids and sweeps continued. Some hid, skittering out at night to scavenge or steal enough to survive another day. Some choose to take the roads in an endless migration to nowhere. Others took to the woods to hunt, to the fields to plant. Some formed communities that ebbed and flowed as they struggled to live in a world where a handful of salt was more precious than gold. And some, like those who founded and formed New Hope, rebuilt. Uh, so this is a really big burden for a 13-year-old who's destined to be the one. Um, of course, she needs help in training. And we have uh, her internship with Malik. Um, Malik isn't simply just a wizard archetype. Uh, he comes to life as a gruff, intense, and eventually mortal man who bears the burden of ensuring the one is ready. This has been his purpose in life like forever. Uh, and ensuring that Fallon knows she has a choice and can turn away, which, of course, she doesn't. Um, of course, uh, Fallon's story is juxtaposed with the tale of New Hope, uh, where the survivors uh, live and are still doing what they can do to help others to knit their slice of the world back together, basically. Um, they're great. And you get to see how the babies who were rescued in, in the first book I have grown up. Um, 
There's a teenage Duncan. He is tied to Fallon by visions they share, and probably by past lives. Um, a very little romance there, so the dangerous world barges into New Hope at the end, causing more tragedy, and it shows just how enormous the task is going to be. Um, Blood and Bone is, of course, the middle chapter. It's one that never struggles to keep the reader's attention. Um, her characterization. There's a segment in there where Fallon's mother is talking about the two men she loved. And, oh my God, it was so, so good. It really, really was. And um, it was like, oh. And you, it, it, it just, these books just suck you in. It draws you right in. Um... You could read it as a standalone, which I did at first. But I was like, wait a minute. Um, there's got to be another book because of the way it ended. And then I found out there was a first book. And I was like, nope, have to do it again. So I got the first one, read the two, and got the third. Um, it is a totally, totally great book. I just can't um, say enough about this trilogy. I really can't. And it, it's so surprising to me. Um, because I, of course, everybody knows her as a romance, uh, you know, writer. So I wouldn't have even uh, read it had I not seen the cover. Um, it caught my attention. It really did. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when I read the inside of the cover, um... I was just like, yes, I'm getting it. Um, so, and been hooked since on this. Uh, <laughs> of course, a rise of magics, as I said, M-A-G-I-C-K-S, um, is out. It came out end of November. I had to wait like two months. I was like, oh, no. Um I just, I, I'm, this is my first time even talking about it because I've not read it, um, the third book yet. So I am as excited as you are about it, believe me. Um, oh, so good, so good. Um. She's the number one uh, New Times, New York Times best-selling author of year one, End of Blood and Bone. Uh, she concludes her stunning trilogy. And it has been praised as, and I quote, a match for end-of-the-world classics like Stephen King's The Stand. Boom, there you go. Um, of course, after the sickness known as the doom destroyed civilization, magic has become commonplace, and Fallon Swift has spent her young years learning its ways. She cannot live in peace until she frees those who have been preyed upon by the government or the purity warriors. These purity warriors are uh, the worst. I mean, uh, you think some of the Walking Dead, uh, you know, horrible whispers and um, such were bad. Uh -uh, these guys are purity warriors. Um, <laughs> they hunt you down, they'll cut you up, to cut your head off, whatever they need to do. So, you have these purity warriors. They're fanaticals. That, that gives you any clue. Um, so, she frees those who have been preyed upon by the government or the fanatical purity warriors, endlessly hunted or locked up in laboratories, brutalized for years on end. She's determined to save even those who have been a complicit with this evil out of fear. If need be, they can be saved. She is strengthened by the bond she shares with her fellow warrior, Duncan. Fallon has already succeeded in rescuing countless shifters and elves and ordinary humans. She must help them heal and rediscover the light and faith. For although from the time of her birth she has been the one, she is still the only one. Um, and as she faces down an old nemesis, sets her sights on the enemy's stronghold and pursues her destiny, 
to finally restore the mystical shield that once protected them all. She will need an army behind her. I'm going to read you a little of the preview uh, for this. Maybe. Huh, maybe not. Okay. It is a wonderful, uh, wonderful books. Um, you really have to read the first two. I absolutely loved it. Um, and I cannot get, I wanted to get the preview of it, but I can't get it, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> Ah, let's see if there's something here. It's just, I can't wait to delve into it. Um, let me see here. And it like, it just blows all together. And you're like at the end, oh no, this can't be. Um, <laughs> okay, let me see if I can read something here. Yeah, okay. Um, she definitely wields her own brand of literary magic. Uh, her mesmer of these characters are so wonderful. Um, so she's going to get this army together. And it is human and um, non-human together. So, um, she, as in her travels, at, you know, after her training, she goes, um, She's inspired to protect them and help them build a new hope. Uh, they call it life for life so all people can live in peace and security. And creating communities and helping them thrive has the added benefit of providing a place for survivors when Fallon and her allies take over purity warrior strongholds in government research facilities. Um, and these become safe spaces which become breeding grounds for more soldiers willing to fight for their cause. Fallon and her army take bold and inspired actions to gain ground against the darkness. But there's no question that in order to truly vanquish the evil that's grown since the doom, she'll have to face it at its source. Fallon's relationship with Duncan grows ever stronger, um, though facing off against evil never guarantees survival. Nora Roberts' magnificent trilogy concludes with another title that perfectly balances magic, adventure, and steely resolve in the battle of good versus evil, while reminding us that while the battles may save us, it's the home, hearth, and community which sustained us. Sustain us. They say it is brilliant and inspiring. Uh, and I, I, I. I haven't, like I said, I haven't read the third one yet. I do have it. And this trilogy is just crazy good. Crazy good. Um, and it just all flows together so well. Um, everything comes full circle. Um, it balances magic, adventure, and resolve. Uh, brilliant and inspiring. And of course... Uh, <laughs> like I said, I would have never expected this out of a romance novelist. A uh, very wide spectrum of um, of writing. Um, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. 
So, highly recommend it. Year one. I'm going to write it in the chat. Year one. Of Blood and Bone. And then, of course, Rise of the Magics. And there we go. I could... Uh, this stupid autocorrect. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Do you ever notice? It's just crazy stuff. Okay. No. Yes, they did. <laughs> Oh boy, the freaks are celebrating. <laughs> They're going around sell it, just setting off explosives again. Okay. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, uh, so that they're called the Chronicles of the One. <laughs> you crazy. Okay, so I would definitely, I highly recommend that the trilogy for that. Who knew? I mean, seriously. So don't, I guess I learned from that not to judge an author by their, by previous uh, books, apparently. So, um, I really try to read about it first before I make an opinion. Uh, because if I hadn't seen that cover, um, I, I kept looking at it, looking at it, I was like, that looks really interesting. Oh, Robert, she writes it. So I just picked it up. One day at work, I was bored, and I read the inside of the cover. I was like, dang, this sounds really good. I'm going to get it. It wasn't bad. And I was hooked from then. So, Yes, I couldn't put it down, and I can't wait to start the third one. But I'm kind of waiting. I'm reading The Red Queen now, so uh, we shall see. Okay, another author I wanted to talk about. Again, it's with magics and such. Um, Cassandra Clare. Wow. I'm reading her Dark Artifices series. Um, you have The Queen of... Um, Air and Darkness, Lady Midnight. I just got done with Lord of Shadows. Um, it's a sequel series to the Mortal Instruments, of course. Um, and this starts with... Um, it's been five years since the events of the Mortal Instruments when Nephilim stood poised on the brink of oblivion and shadow hunter Emma Carstairs lost her parents. Um, Emma Carstairs... Uh, Raised in the L.A. Institute, Emma is paired as a parabatai with her best friend, Julian. She hunts those who cause the death of her parents. Their trail, their following, leads back to those they've always been taught to trust. Shadow Hunter Lot, um, at the same time, skipped a whole sentence there. Emma is falling in love with the one person in the world she's absolutely forbidden by. Shadow Hunter Law to love. Uh, it's uh, set against the backdrop of present-day L.A. Um, Emma must learn to trust her head and her heart as she investigates a demonic plot that stretches from the courts of the fairy. You have your seely and unseely courts, of course, um, from fairies to the enchanted sea that pounds the beaches of Santa Monica. And you have these institutes. They're, oh, it's so good. Um... This is the, uh, I have so many more. Of, I just want to read all of those books. Uh, the Dark Artifices is a trilogy, of course, and is the fourth series in the Shadowhunter Chronicles and the sequel to The Mortal Instruments. And if you've not seen that movie, highly recommend it. Um, I loved it. The series consists of three books, Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. In that order, by the way. <laughs> It'll tell you on the book, too. Um, 
it follows Emma's journey as a shadow hunter. And these are these guys, these people are cool. I absolutely love it. Um, and it, the, if you don't, a pair of batai is two bonded shadow hunters, and they get get more strength feeding off each other. Um, and is more valuable than any bond in the world. It makes the two more powerful and strong. But there's only one drawback. It is forbidden to fall in love with your pair of batai. Uh, but they have. Uh, the Dark Artifice is a trilogy about their struggle against their enemies and how the two protagonists deal with their forbidden love and the resulting consequences. Um, and the series is told from the point of view of the characters in the story. It is so, so good. Absolutely um, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and of course, you have your City of Ashes, uh, your Immortal Instruments uh, books. Um, of course, and they had the movie. Which, I, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, gosh darn it, this weather's killing me. Um, uh, the Mortal Instruments. If you have not seen that movie, please do. Um, you have City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and a City of Heavenly Fire. Um, the Mortal Instruments um, is chronologically the third series of the proposed five in the Shadowhunter Chronicles. Um, it follows, but it was the first one published. The Shadowhunter Chronicles, but it was the first one published. Um, it follows Clary Frey, um, and who interacts with a group of uh, shadow hunters while discovering her own heritage. The shadow hunters protect the world of mundane people who are also called mundanes or mundies from dark forces beyond their world. It's like urban fantasy contemporary. Um, it's very well written. Um, but Claire did not originally intend to write the series for teens, actually. When she began writing City of Bones, she did not view it. Um, she viewed it first and foremost as a fantasy novel. Um, but it's really a really good series. Um, very good, very good. I love the idea of these shadow hunters. They're really great. Um, and that was the first book I had read of hers. It was, um, about the shadow hunters. I was like, oh, dang, I really like this. Um, I loved the way she wrote it. You could understand it. I mean, and of course there's, uh, like I said, the fairies from the Seely and Unseely courts. Um, you have the Nephilim. Uh, they're a long line of human and angel hybrids. Um, crazy stuff. Um, uh, there is a show, Shadow Hunters. Um, I did not know this. I just found this out right now. Oh, surprise. Uh, yeah, I did not know this. Um, wow. First episode was January 12th, 2016. Final episode was last May. Um, guess he's going to have to check these out. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> I'm looking at the cast and I'm just like, wow. I could see them as who they're playing. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, wow. Has anybody seen it? Because I have not seen this, uh, Shadowhunters, and I did not see it. I didn't correlate it to that. Now I'm going to have to see it. There's 55 episodes. Ooh. Holy cow, I did not know that. So, uh, uh, uh. 
Plus, there's the uh, Mortal Instruments movie, which was great. Wow, I did not know that. Holy cow. See, I just learned something, too. So, you have all these books. Oh, they're really, really good. I am impressed by her writing, the cast of characters. And in, when you have so many families, uh, there's these Nephilim families, you have um, the cohort, you have, you know, these different institutes. It can get rather confusing, but she really, um, you're not confused, okay? It's very well written that you understand what's going on and who is who. Um uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. But I love it, the idea of it, these um, uh, shadow hunters that they're uh, human angel hybrids. Very cool, very cool. Um, you have four ways to enter the shadow hunter world. Um, you should read them in the order she suggests. You can get this anywhere. Um, of course, you have the Mortal Instruments Part 1. Uh, bones, ashes, and glass, the cities of those. Then you have the infernal devices, clockwork angel, prince, and princess. Then you go to mortal instruments, part two, uh, fallen angels, lost souls, and heavenly fire. And then you go to uh, the Bane Chronicles, the Shadow Hunters Codex. Uh, which is, I think, is the one I read, the very first one I read, and I went back and did the Dark Artifice series. I do have the uh, Mortal Instruments Part 1 and 2. I haven't started them yet. Um, I'll probably get some of the other ones, and then just start from the beginning. So, um, then you have uh, the, after Part 2 of the Mortal Instruments, you have the Bane Chronicles, the Shadowhunters Codex, and Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy. Then you go to the Dark Artifices, which I have also Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Dark Darkness. Then you have the Eldest Curses, the Red Scrolls of Magic. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. I had Ghosts of the Shadow Market. Excellent book. Um, and The Last Hours. This is coming at this March. Um it's number 10, Chain of Gold. Um, you can read them in their uh, order of each series, like the Mortal Instruments, all six. The Infernal Devices, the three. Artifices, three. Uh, one of the Eldest Curses, The Last Hours, which is um, coming out in March. So... Uh, so that is several ways to do that. And I highly recommend those also. Highly recommend. Um, I just like the premise of each of these books and its uh, separate um, entities. Um, just the idea of what these are and how they portray their characters and... Just a very well written, very well well written. So, um, if you have not read either of these authors, and I highly suggest you do. Absolutely, um, uh, I love the Dark Artifices. Um, that's great. It really is. Um, And just different things that happen. I mean, again, this is, you know, not your piddly widdly, you know. Uh, it's pretty gruesome stuff at times. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Uh, it really is. Some of these uh, wizards and uh, sorcerers or whatever. Um, uh, oh, we also have... Um, Four of the Dark Artifices, you have Books of Three. Um, it's going to be followed by The Wicked Powers, which is upcoming. Ooh, yay! Uh, Shadowhunters, just so great in what they do. And then you have these, uh, the Silent Brothers. Ooh, those are creepy. Um, 
They take care of the dead <laughs> in the ashes. They take care of the dead. That's where they go and they, you know, live underground and all this stuff. It's kind of creepy, actually. Uh, the Silent Brothers. Mm. Um, but a very good set of books from Nora Roberts and Cassandra Clare. Um, we'll be discussing some other ones when I get done with the Red Queen. I will let you know how that went. Um, the Red Queen... is <coughs> excuse me oh my god um it is by Victoria Aveyard it in the chat so Victoria Aveyard Red Queen um, again it's a New York Times number one bestseller it's a sweeping tale sweeping tale you gotta love it right uh, a power intrigue and betrayal uh, it's perfect for fans of George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones series. Um, Mayor, Barrow's, Mayor Barrow's world is divided by blood. Those with common red blood serve the silver-blooded elite who are gifted with superhuman abilities. Mayor is a red, scraping by as a thief in a poor village until a twist of fate throws her in front of the silver court. She discovers she has ability of her own. The king forces her to play the role of a lost silver princess and betrothes her to one of his own sons. As Mare is drawn further into the silver world, she rests everything and uses her new position to help the Scarlet Guard, a growing red rebellion. Uh, one wrong move can lead to her death, but in the dangerous game she plays, the only certainty is betrayal. Um, huh, coming in April... Uh, Broken Throne, a Red Queen collection. A right with three brand new novellas. Um, it's a compelling new world of action-packed surprises, inventive and character-driven. Um, Aviard sets her audience uh, up. Let's see. Uh, let me read you something from the back cover, which I have. It says, Mayor Barrow's world is divided by blood. Da, 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 her family, um, Mayor and her family are lowly reds, destined to serve the silver elite whose supernatural abilities make them nearly gods. Mayor steals what she can to help her family survive. But a twist of fate leads her to the royal palace itself, where in front of the king and all of his nobles, she discovers an ability she didn't know she had, except her blood is red. To hide this impossibility, of course, the king forces her into the role of a lost silver princess and betrothes her to her as one of his own sons. As Mare is drawn further into the silver world, her actions put into motion a deadly and violent dance, pitting prince against prince and Mare against her own heart. She's a debut author. Victoria Aviar comes a lush, vivid fantasy series where loyalty and desire can tear you apart. And the only certainty is betrayed. So, there you go. And I just started that the other night. So, yes. Um, looks good. I'm enjoying it so far from what I've read. Um... Broken Throne to Red Queen. These are coming up. Cruel Crown, uh, Steel Scars. Let's see. More by the author. Uh, Broken Throne, Cruel Crown, Steel Scars, Glass Sword, War Storm, King's Cage. Um, you can get this in audiobook also. Uh, Red Queen series. Yeah, War Storm, Cruel Crown, Broken Throne, Steel Scars. 
um, the selection, Queen Song, An Ember in the Ashes, Six of Crows, A Court of Thrones, Shadow and Bone. So, uh, yes. There you go. So, that is one series. As soon as I'm done with that, I will let you know how that went. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Of course, it's winter time. You know, sometimes you're stuck in the house. Sometimes, not always. Especially now, this winter been kind of crazy. Just be careful out there. The weather's supposed to be totally goofy this weekend. You know, we have that. Uh, we have severe storms in the south. Please be careful in the south. Um, we have rained one to four inches up in the Midwest, which is here. Uh, maybe changing over to wintry mix and snow by Saturday night. You know, it's going to be freaking 60 degrees a Friday and then drop back down towards normal lows. We'll be in the 30s next week, finally. Uh, more normal, I should say, but no real snowstorms yet here. Um, I'm hoping for one. <laughs> It's kind of not winter without it, I don't think. But uh, tell me your one of your favorite books you've read or are going to read this winter while you're, you know, kind of stuck in the house. Um, you know, what's your favorite uh, genre to read? Um, I like a good mystery suspense novel also. I'm going to be discussing uh, President Child soon coming up and the Pendergast um Series, oh my God, is so good, so so good. We'll do that. I want to discuss like some of the older authors too. Um, you know, Agatha Christie, Ellery Queen, all these, um, and what impact they've had on modern writers. So we'll begin to horror. Well, yeah, of course, horror. Yes, of course, Chris. You know, I'll do horror absolutely. Um, anyone in particular you'd like to hear? Which one do you want to do? What books? Let me know and we'll do it. Um, absolutely horror. There's lots of that. We can do that for months. <laughs> Maybe every other show uh, we'll do horror because there's just so much out there. So much. We've got Joe Hill, Stephen King. Um, you know, we have uh, Clyde Barker. We have Ray Badbury. We have all these horror authors. Um, so good, so good. So, yeah, we could go on for a long time with horror. Absolutely. Uh, so, of course, Stephen King, you got it. Um, I'm really looking forward to It Bleeds. I don't know about you, but I can't wait. Um, I hate knowing when it's coming out because it seems like it's like, oh my God, it's going to be a freaking eternity before we get it. Oh, The Institute is really good. I loved that book. I really did. Um, wow, that was, I liked it. I absolutely enjoyed The Institute by Stephen King. Yeah, it was, uh, that was good. Oh, uh, just creepy stuff, right? Just in the middle of modern times, there's this institute out of the dark ages, for crying out loud, but kind of, it's just, wow, it was good, it was good. Uh, really enjoyed it. I felt sorry for him, though, at the end. I was, oh, no. Not saying anything more than that. Okay, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, yes, and Joe Hill, of course. What about Nosferatu? Oh, my God, that series is so great. Zachary Quino as, uh, you know, just amazing. I love it. Uh, of course, I love the Mr. Mercedes trilogy by Stephen King also. Really, really enjoyed that. And um, Holly will be back in It Bleeds, which is great. I love Holly. Uh, so lots to talk about with him. All these, I don't know how he keeps all these characters straight. I mean, and then puts them in other books and the references. And oh my God, my brain would explode. Um, so yeah, we'll be talking a lot about him. Absolutely. His um, books. So, and of course, The Outsider is going to be a movie or a TV series. I can't remember. Is it going to be a TV series or movie, The Outsider? Do you know, Chris? I don't remember offhand. Yeah, right? Yeah. But you know who I'm talking about in the Institute. Oh, that was horrible. Anyway, 
Um, is, it, is The Outsider going to be a TV series or a movie? No clue. Let me see if I can look it up. Um, it's going to be one or the other. Okay, let me look it up here. The Outsider. Uh, okay. Got that. Um, highly watchable check on King Snow. Well, what's it going to be? A movie or a... Oh, it's going to be... No. Um, okay. The Outsider. Ugh. Let me see. It doesn't tell me whether it's going to be. It's going to be something. Movie or TV series. I think it's going to be a series. Uh... January 12th on HBO. I'll watch the premieres. Okay, here it is. The Outsider. Okay, here here we go. I just found it. Based on Stephen King's best-selling novel of the same name, uh, The Outsider begins by following a seemingly straightforward investigation. But when an insidious supernatural force edges its way into the case, it leads a seasoned cop an unorthodox investigator to question everything they believe in. So this will be... Uh, January 12th, Sunday. Um, wow. Let me see what time. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, January 12th, and I'm not seeing a time. Ben Mendelsohn, Cynthia Irville, Bill Camp, Mayor Whittingham, uh, based on the best thing to watch the trailer on HBO.com. Uh, Outsider Cast. Okay. TV series. Uh, cast and crew. Let me see if it tells me a time. Uh, writing credits cast. What time? <laughs> Uh, HBO. What time? It's Sunday, but I'm trying to figure out what time. Um, it's going to be odd. So it's a series. Starts Sunday, Chris. Um, nine p.m. HBO East. Monday on HBO West at midnight. So. Uh, first episode, The Outsider by Stephen King. The series starts Sunday, the 12th at 9 p.m. on HBO. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, Sunday, I'm putting it in here. January 12th, HBO. Oh, I'm surprised they're putting on an HBO, though. But okay. Uh, 9 p.m. Okay, there you go. The Outsider by Stephen King. Uh, Sunday, January 12th, HBO at 9 p.m. Uh, wow. Bill Camp, Mayor Winningham. I like Mayor Winningham. Uh, Patty Considine, Julia Nicholson, 
Jeremy Bob, Mark Menchacha, Cynthia Irvio, uh, Bill Cam, Jeremy Bob, Michael Esper will be reappearing, Jason Bateman. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, miniseries. Very cool. I'm glad we brought that up so I could look that up. Very cool. So, should be good. Um... So lots of stuff out there. Look, we went from that to movies and miniseries. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking more about this. Absolutely. So, yay, the book corner is back. I'm excited. So many books coming out. So many good, good books. So, if I know, we'll be talking. I promise next time we'll talk about Stephen King and the outsider in the series and see how it does. Um, and the Institute. Oh, God, the Institute was so good. I love that book. I really do. It's up there uh, with some of his bad, I'll tell you. And, of course, his son, Joe Hill. Wow! I mean, if he's... What can you say? The legacy continues, right? The dynasty, yes. Okay. All right, coming up tomorrow, we have... Uh, DWD. Join me for music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So come on in and enjoy that. Friday, we have Hollywood Review. And then don't go away because then we have our own Free Chris Stevens with Freaks in the Basement. Uh, you got to check it out. It is amazing. He does such a great job. Saturday, Michelle and I will be back for... Um, Ecto and Encounters. So join us for that. So much going on out there. Um, also, prayers for Australia. Oh my God, those poor animals and poor people. Uh, pray, pray for rain, okay? Lots of rain to help in these firefighters that have been battling this for ever. Um, they are, they are in great need of some rest and some help, so. Um, also, Puerto Rico and the earthquakes. Oh, my God. Prayers to those people. And they're saying the worst is yet to come. So, prayers out for them also. And, of course, um, for the U.S., as always. Okay. All right. That ends it for me tonight. Thank you for joining me. And join me in two weeks for the Book Corner. Peace out, y'all. Have a great night.